Welcome back Petapixel viewers, it is Chris Nichols here and today is our review of the Google Pixel 8 Pro for photographers. So much like we did with the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max episode, we're just gonna be looking at the photo and video capabilities of this smartphone. And we are just looking at the Google Pixel 8 Pro. And that's because you get way better photographic features on the Pro series than you do the standard Pixel 8. You get things, for example, like the ability to shoot up to the 48 or 50 megapixel resolution that the cameras provide, rather than being stuck at 12 megapixels. You also get the option to have full manual controls and so much more. And so that's why we're gonna focus only on the Pixel 8 Pro. If you're into photography and video, this is the model you wanna get, despite the fact that it is a physically larger smartphone. You are stuck with the larger 6.7 inch screen, but on the plus side, this is an upgraded display from the standard Pixel 8. So first off, this is a variable frame rate from one to 120 hertz. It'll adjust intelligently to save you battery life, whether you're looking at a web page or if you're doing photo or video work, for example, watching movies, that kind of thing. Also, the screen brightness on here is excellent. This is 2400 nits of peak brightness. So that gets us very close to what the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max can do. And so that now gives us a very capable screen because this phone now also supports Ultra HDR. Now, the fact that we have HDR photography now on the Google Pixel 8 is a big move forward because this is something we need to see on all of these devices. And so this is now able to shoot in a P3 color space. And then if you view it on the right display, like you have, for example, here in the phone, it will give you that wider dynamic range, those brighter highlights, and it just looks beautiful. However, even though this is a P3 color space, Google's now using their own proprietary Ultra HDR format, which means we now have another format out there. So the complications involved with having a brand new HDR format is what it'll be supported on and not supported on. I mean, Jordan was pulling photos into Final Cut, for example, it would come in there as an HDR file, but it wouldn't show up as HDR on preview or on his iPhone, right? I mean, there's still gonna be all these sort of problems with how is it gonna display the original intention of your photograph? What's it gonna look like when you actually look at it on different displays? Now, we could have shot this video in HDR so that you could see that vibrancy, but the last time we did that, everybody complained on the iPhone 15 that everything looked funny and strange, and that's because if you're not looking on HDR display, it's not gonna give you the ideal look. Anyways, you can see how complicated this gets. So let's talk about a substantial improvement on the Google Pixel 8 Pro. That's the cameras. So we've got our three cameras, the ultra wide, the main, and the telephoto. And in all regards, either the sensor's larger or the lens is brighter or both compared to the Pixel 7 Pro and even the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. So for our main camera, we have a 25 millimeter full frame equivalent, 50 megapixel f1.68 sensor. So this is a really bright aperture to have now on an already powerful main camera. But we also have an upgraded ultra wide camera. This gives you an 11 millimeter equivalent focal length, very wide, f1.95. And then we also have a telephoto lens giving you 112 millimeter full frame equivalent, f2.8. Both of these cameras are 48 megapixel sensors. That's a huge change over what the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max bring to the table. So when using the ultra wide lens, I did notice just the slightly wider field of view than you normally get on a lot of smartphones. That 11 millimeter focal length is a lot of fun to use and it's nice and bright. You know, results are decent. I would still say ultra wide cameras are a weak point when it comes to the three cameras, but I still enjoyed the photos that I got with it. When it came to the main camera, this is a really nice improvement. I'm getting shallower depth of field than I would get on something like the iPhone 15 Pro's main camera. Uh, it's certainly better than what I would get on the Pixel 7 Pro as well. But also also, I was just finding the image quality overall, lots of detail, very sharp. When it came to the five times telephoto, this is where because of the 48 megapixels, I noticed substantial improvements in detail over the iPhone 15 Pro Max's lens. So across the board, I can get nice sharp detail, uh, good stabilization on them, the focusing is fast, and uh, lots of detail regardless of which camera I used. Okay, let's talk about the portrait mode next, where you take a picture of a pet or you take a picture of a friend, and what it will do is then create a artificial shallow depth of field kind of look to the photograph. What I'm finding though is that with people, it does a pretty good job. You can see here, even around the hair and edges, it's not too bad, it blends fairly nicely. But with pets, for example, not such a good job. You can still see the obvious masking issues here. But it is strange that I can only use a one and a half or two times equivalent zoom range. I still can't do portrait mode with the 5X telephoto lens, and that's unfortunate because I really like the compression that creates, and that's something the iPhone can do. 
So let's talk about this new Pro mode that you can unlock on the Google Pixel 8 Pro. It basically just gives you some nice features and controls, things like changing brightness, shadow detail, white balance, where the camera focuses, shutter speed and ISO, so I can have some control over doing, you know, long exposure effects and things like that. So this is a nice thing because there are third-party apps that we've seen on products like Apple iPhones, but those will still only work on one basic RAW file, not a compilation of images, whereas this will work and still compile a lot of the images together giving you those benefits. So this is nice to be able to have control creatively over things like long exposures, although I did find myself just using the built-in long exposure mode because I found that that worked very easily and quickly. As well, we've got things like portrait mode built into the camera, but why can't I then have access through the Pro app to have a control to change my depth of field? And it would just apply those portrait depth maps and give me some artificial control over a kind of, you know, artificial aperture. That would be nice to have in there, but sadly we don't. Ah, Google Pixel's night sight mode. Let's talk about this because this is one of our personal favorites. So the thing I love about the night sight mode is first off, you can turn it on or turn it off regardless of the level of light. And I really like this. I mean, with the iPhone, it's kind of an automatic affair whether it will become available or not. With the Google Pixel, I can turn on anytime I want. I found even in contrasty situations where I might have deeper shadows somewhere, it can really help improve those. For night shots, it dramatically improves the overall tonal range that you get, the shadow detail. So it's an awesome tool to use. I also love that on the Google Pixel 8 Pro, when I'm using Night Sight, I can still get 50 megapixel files, unlike other smartphones that will automatically drop down to something lower like 12. So I get lots of megapixels. The Google Night Sight files have good detail, but they also look a little bit more natural, less over-processed than what I've seen on the iPhone 15 Pro. And so I have more work that I can do with them. I can sharpen them up if I want to. I can crop a little bit. I just find that the Google Pixel Night Sight mode is still very effective and an advantage over a lot of its competitors. Hey, it's your captain, Jordan Drake, to talk about the video capabilities of the Google Pixel 8 Pro, which is actually filming me right now, but first I should explain, I forgot I had to record this today and I have to go to a costume party immediately after, so you get a bit of a show, I guess? Now the last Google camera that I looked at for video was the Pixel Fold, and I was actually fairly unimpressed with it, especially in high contrast scenes. So that's why I was really excited with the Pixel 8. They're using a new technology that's very similar to what we've seen on Airy cameras or the Panasonic GH6, where it's actually gonna read out the sensor at two different sensitivities simultaneously, which is gonna give you more detail in the shadow and the highlights. They've also added HDR capture with HLG output, and I've gotta say, when I'm editing these files, there's definitely quite a bit more room in both highlights and shadows than what I'd seen previously with other Google phones. So how does this compare to the brand new iPhone 15 Pro? Well, I was very impressed with the dynamic range on that, but mostly when we're shooting in its log capture. The big thing to remember though is when you're shooting log on the iPhone, it's recording absolutely massive ProRes HQ files, 750 megabits per second at 4K 30p. Compare that to what we're getting on the Google Pixel 8 at 42 megabits per second when you're shooting its HDR 10-bit. That's way more manageable. I think it's gonna be really useful for a lot of people. In terms of the actual look of the video coming off of the Pixel 8 Pro, I'm actually really quite impressed. You might say it's smooth sailing with the image quality here because yes, we still get a little bit of over sharpening. That seems to be an issue with all smartphones at this point, but skin tones are actually really pleasing and I find the color very natural and very accurate. One of the biggest one of the biggest things struggle with is low light performance because unlike photos, you can't just stack a whole bunch of images in order to increase your low light performance. But I have to say the brighter lens that we have on the Pixel 8 Pro here is giving a slightly sharper video than what I'm getting off the iPhone 15. So if you are in low light, that is a real advantage, though honestly, neither of them are fantastic. But what's really exciting that I can't test at this point is in the next few months, Google is gonna be bringing out night sight for video. Now it's really interesting, you'll shoot low light video, you'll actually then upload it to Google for them to process it with their own machine learning technologies, and they'll send you back a much better low light video clip. It sounds really promising, but I can't test it at this point. I also find stabilization very important because you're not often going to be putting these things on a gimbal or on a tripod. They're generally used handheld. And I do have to say iPhone standard stabilization is quite a bit more effective than what we're seeing 
on the Pixel, but also if you jump over to their active mode compared to Apple's sport mode, well, there you can see they both do have some digital weirdness going on in them, but it is far more pronounced on the Google. Their stabilization still needs a little bit of an update. The last feature I really wanted to talk about is Google's speech enhancement. Now we've seen similar technology to this on a lot of video editors recently, where it's using machine learning to analyze the audio and just really emphasize the dialogue in it. But this is doing it right on the phone and it is incredibly effective. Okay, so I'm standing above a busy highway and this is the unfiltered audio out of the Pixel 8 Pro. All right, now give a listen to the audio with speech enhancement turned on on the Pixel 8 Pro. Quite a bit better. I mean, in extreme wind, it can still get some of that bleeding into your audio, but in most situations, you can basically remove any distracting audio from your video clip, and you don't have to worry about doing it in post, especially if you just want to shoot and post straight to social media. This is an awesome feature. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with the Pixel 8 Pro. I didn't feel like I was missing a lot compared to the iPhone 15 Pro when I was using it, unless I go and shoot that log video. But again, huge file sizes on that. You'll wind up using external hard drives a lot of the time. It's just not practical for the majority of people who are using their smartphone to record quick video clips. In that regard, I think this is a huge upgrade for Google, and it's gonna make a lot of Android shooters very happy. So now let's talk about the much lauded AI tools that we see in the Google Pixel 8 series. So first off, as I've talked about, there are some basic ones that we can do right on the phone itself. So you could do a basic magic eraser, you could do a sort of blur the background portrait mode, you could do a replace the sky kind of thing, but it's a pretty rough effect. I mean, you really do see it. Lots of artifacts, lots of issues. So what you really wanna do is use their new magic editor. Now in order to do this, you absolutely have to have connection to cell or Wi-Fi with your phone, and you have to have uploaded to the photos you want to work with to the Google Pixel Cloud because you're using the Google Pixel servers and their computing power to do the heavy lifting here. Now using some of these tools, I am noticing the results are better than the ones we have in phone. For example, like Magic Eraser, it's more effective here. And then it unlocks interesting things like uh, being able to grab a subject and move it around the frame or delete it all together. There are still some issues though. I mean, we still have some artifacts. Sometimes the background's just a little bit funny, even where they have generated new backgrounds. Sometimes you you still have a person's shadow left on the ground. You'll have to delete that separately or you delete the person, but you can see, still, still see their hand on somebody else's wrist, for example, stuff like this. So it's getting there. I still don't think it's quite perfect. I think for interesting social media stuff where you just want to post it, you're probably going to get away with it. But for serious work, we're still not quite there yet. One thing I will say though, using the magic editor, of course, in the advertising, it happens instantaneously. But in truth, it does take quite a while to apply these effects. I mean, I can click on something, change it, retouch it, and then I have to wait quite a while for it to actually edit the effect and then I have to see do I accept that do I like it do I want to change it again I wouldn't call it an exactly fast process so this is kind of a tricky conclusion for me because in some ways the Google Pixel 8 Pro feels more like a photographer's camera, but then a lot of other ways it feels less like a photographer's camera. I mean, what I appreciate as a photographer is having the pro control, absolutely having the higher resolution sensors, especially with the ultra wide and telephoto lenses and just the overall inherent quality of the images. I mean, the color is nice. I like the skin tones. It seems to be handling dynamic range very well. And I feel like I've got a fair amount of meat that I can work with with those raw files. So. I do like the image quality I'm getting out of the Pixel 8 Pro. I think it has to be stated that we have excellent hardware here. I mean, the sensors are large, the lenses are bright, the image stabilization is good. This is all very beneficial stuff. But at the same time, I do feel like that higher resolution, like we've talked about with the iPhones as well, won't be as big a consideration for people that are just using this primarily for social media output. You don't need a lot of megapixels for that. So then the appeal becomes these AI tools, the ability to edit your photos afterwards, to change things. And then this kind of sparks a debate about, well, are we even talking about photography anymore. I mean, we're compiling multiple images and then we're using AI machine learning and editing to move things around and change people's faces, that kind of stuff. And it really does bring up some interesting questions that we have to consider. You know, we are reaching a point where imagery is not necessarily going to be anything close to what the original photons that were captured represented. But at the same time, I do kind of fall on the side that I'm okay with that because frankly, we've been able to edit digital photos for a long time. We've been able to change skies. We've been able to change people's facial expressions, unblink their eyes if they're blinking in a shot, do things like take somebody and move them around, erase other areas. And now, of course, we've got programs like Adobe Photoshop doing a lot of AI-based creative generation of background 
backgrounds and stuff. I mean, we're already there, but right now we are able to do a lot of these major changes if we have the skills to do so. It does take a lot of talent and it does take a lot of time. And although there's an art form there to be had, you have to make sure that you're able to do it convincingly. On the other hand, having these AI tools built in with the Magic Editor, I can see how this is going to be very handy for people that don't necessarily have that skill set or don't have the time to invest in that. That being said, I still feel like it's very early days because it takes quite a long time to do the editing changes and frankly the quality is still not quite there. I'm still noticing lots of weirdness, lots of artifacts, a lot of stuff that if I really wanted to put it to social media myself, I'd have to take the image, put it in Photoshop and do a lot of that editing the old-fashioned way anyways. So one thing I do know for sure is that this Google AI editing is only going to get better and so it's a very interesting dynamic that people now have these capabilities right on the phone at their fingertips. But in the end, the Google Pixel 8 Pro is a fantastic camera for photography. I mean, it has very powerful hardware, probably the best that I've personally tested as far as image quality goes. And I noticed significant improvements even over the Google Pixel 7 Pro, which was a fantastic camera in its own right. So I think we do have a really solid picture taker here. Even compared to things like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I think that this Google Pixel 8 Pro advances that in some important ways as well. But I think it's also important to say that Apple has some fantastic AI magic trickery themselves. And I think in a lot of ways, they're more refined than the Google Pixel is. But we now have a race. So we're going to have to see what other companies like OnePlus and Samsung and all the other ones also do. But regardless, I think this AI-based editing after the fact is here to stay. As always, please leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Check out the podcast on this channel or listen to it on your favorite podcasting apps. Just look for the Petapixel podcast. Thanks. Give a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We would really appreciate that. We'll see you all soon with more on Petapixel.